Well, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Dixie Bell Paint fans. How are you today? It is Wednesday, it is 3 p.m., and this is my time to come sit on the floor, play with paint, and have you all join me on a painting adventure. So welcome, how are you? My name is Melissa. I am the owner and artist at the Top Drawer RBA located in Richmond, Virginia, and I am a faux finish painter. And I'm also a Dixie Bell brand ambassador, which means it's my job. I'm here to help you, teach you, guide you, and show you all the fun things that you can do with paint. So today is part two of my painting barn series. Hopefully you uh, got to see me last week, hang out and show you how to start this piece. I started it last week with you here on the Dixie Bell paint page. And we got to a certain point after an hour where I'm like, we have to stop, wait for it to dry. We're gonna come back and do some more things. So we are ready today for part two. Maybe you're ready too. Maybe you took the last week to start to um, paint to get ready and we can paint together. We're gonna have like a Bob Ross moment today. We're gonna do a lot of gentle talking and hand painting and hopefully you'll hang out with me for an hour and we can almost get it done. All right, good, let's get started. So last week, if you joined me, you got to see the beginning stages of this um, really rustic handmade cabinet. Uh, we talked about being smarter and, and not wasting your energy on a piece that's already distressed and handmade and that looks rustic. Um, if something is screaming rustic, let's paint it super rustic. Let's get farmhouse, let's get wild. I don't do white and I don't do black, but this is my version of farmhouse. So we did the sky last week to start with. Um, we did Mason Dixon Gray. We came down here with a little bit of blue. I think we did, uh, let's see what we had in the floor here. Did a little bit of sea glass mixed in here. We did some clouds with cotton. I showed you how to do all that. We also came in on the base and we did a bunch of greens, okay? We did the beautiful, um, let's see, we did holy guacamole, we did palmetto. Basically, we just did the sky and, and the base of this project. We then got started with this cute little barn, remember? We used barn red, rusty nail, caviar, and like a bunch of the grays. So really the sky and then the clouds, the blues, the whites, and then the base is, is you know, those greens and those browns and getting that barn started. So. If you're ready, we're gonna pull you in and start to hand paint, all right? Hey, Sully Joe, thanks for joining today. All right, so I have decided after looking at this rustic top on the piece that I'm going to hemp oil the top of this piece and leave it rustic and um, the original stain color that it is. So in order to recondition the wood and get that top piece back to, to kind of, you know, being sale ready, because right now it's kind of rough and tough and, and not really that pretty, I've decided to use hemp oil. Um, hemp oil is, hemp seed oil is a really great thing for refreshing wood. I don't know if you've used it before. You can actually use this as a paint sealer as well, but I use this on the interior of my pieces and it just brings them right back. Because of the camera angle and I don't want to jiggle joggle you all around, um, I'm going to leave the top up here and I'm just going to aim you up a tiny bit and we're just going to hemp oil the sides so that you can see what hemp oil does to your piece. I put it onto an applicator pad and I basically just wipe it on. What it's gonna do is add that really pretty shine and bring the wood back to a conditioned state, okay? I'm gonna to to obviously be doing this on the top too, but for now, for camera work's sake, I'm just wiping this on. You're gonna let it get dry in approximately four to six hours. You can come back and wipe it again, and you're going to see your wood become conditioned and beautiful and shiny and I just love it. I do it on my furniture a lot because it just looks clean, looks fresh and so clean. So that is the plan for the top of this piece, okay? So let's pretend that I've done the whole top. I'm gonna put this aside. Let's get hand painting. So last week we discussed this little farmhouse cabinet, right? We talked about chickens. Hi Amy, how are you? We talked about painting um, birds on here, right? I'm gonna teach you that today. And we thought about adding a, a silhouette of a chicken, because really, what's more farmhouse than a chicken, right? <laughs> we talked about basic shapes, how to draw an outline, and I was really thinking about putting a chicken on here. I'm gonna show you something on the inside. I got a little antsy, little ants in my pants. I couldn't wait to get my hands on this piece. Um, so I painted a chicken <laughs> inside the door to see if I would like it, because how are you gonna know unless you try it, right? You never know unless you try it. I painted a chicken on the inside of the door, which is actually really cute because when you open the door, you're like, oh, hi, there's a chicken on here. <laughs> but after painting the little colorful chicken, I decided that even though he's adorable and cute and I love him, 
he's not the look that I want to do on this kind of moody sky. He's a little too cheerful, chicken. I want to go crows. We're gonna we're gonna hang out to what I always do on these barn kind of inspired pieces, um, which is crows. All right. So when you're painting a crow, and I'm gonna pull this camera in nice and close. So I'm gonna cut myself off, but you guys are gonna be able to see everything that's happening nice and close. All right. Let's bring you in a tiny bit more, and we're going to get started. So when you are painting a crow, you can make this really easy on yourself. You don't need to paint a detailed crow with feathers and you know, the whole thing, why don't you just paint a silhouette? A silhouette is a lot easier to draw than a actual bird, right? So if you look at a crow, it's the same shapes as I showed you last week for the chicken. Everything that you're drawing and painting is actually just a version of a shape. So I sat on the floor today and I sketched some crow silhouettes, okay? It's always helpful to have a reference when you're painting um, to look at because you kind of want to eyeball things and especially when you're painting on a vertical surface like this, things can become a little distorted if you don't um, keep track of what you're doing. So let's paint a crow today, okay? And we're gonna finish up this barn, and we're gonna finish up the grass, we're gonna do all the things. We're gonna do crows, and we're gonna paint him right on the front, and we're also gonna paint him on the sides. But we have to finish our barn, right? Because last week we started with this really fun little rusty nail, barn red, we did a lot of drips, I showed you how to kind of make it look old. We penciled in our silo last week, but we did not paint our silo. So if I have to start on this side and get the silo painted in, and then we're gonna work on some grass and birds. Sound like a plan? If you have any questions, I'm always happy to answer. If I miss them, I'll come back in and check up on you later and we will cover all things hand painting. All right, let's get Bob Ross crazy in here. So on the floor, I have a little tin of water and a paper plate. This is gonna let me mix my colors. Because when you're painting something that's supposed to look a little bit more natural and true, um, you're probably not going to want to keep it all one color, right? Because things change. So I'm going to stick my brush in here, stick my spatula in here. I'm going to grab some different paint. I've got some beautiful Mason Dixon Gray on the floor. I'm going to put a little bit of that on my tray. And I'm just scooping it out with a little spatula. And I'm going to start a little artist palette down here. Okay, so this little artist palette is going to have a couple different colors on here. So we just add some Mason Dixon Gray. I'm going to add some chocolate onto my paper plate. And I think I'm going to put a little bit of gravel road in there. And we're going to work on our silo. Can you see the pencil outline that we started last week? Last week I taught you how to draw this simple barn. And I used a ruler just to make sure that my lines would be straight on the side of the silo. And we're going to get in here and I'm going to show you how to do some 3D painting. Let's add a little bit of gravel road to my plate and get started. So I wasn't sure after last week if y'all would come back and watch me and join me on this little painting adventure, but I had a huge response saying, please come back, please finish your painting. So I saved this and that's really hard for me because when I get my hot little hands on something, you guys, I want to get it done and I want to get it done like yesterday. <laughs> so this is for you. This painting is all just for you. Let's start with Mason Dixon Gray. My pencil line comes up here curves around, again, simple shapes, okay? You've got a rectangle and kind of a curved surface. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you're gonna wanna try and keep your lines fairly even on the sides. So I'm mixing the three colors that I put on my palette because a silo would kind of be like a cement gray. So I'm mixing the Mason Dixon Gray and the chocolate, just a touch, just to get kind of a worn out color. You can spray your brush if you want to, um, I like to spray, where's my missing bottle? I like to actually spray my palette and water down my paint a little bit when it comes to hand painting. I love the chunky texture that my Dixie Belle gives me, but for the edges, I like a more defined line. So that means I'm gonna use a little bit more water on my piece. All right, so just taking your artist brush, coming in close to the edge, getting lined up. If it drips, that's okay. We're gonna paint grass down here, fields, all sorts of fabulous things. So now you're going to start to see the texture of this piece. Remember I said it was like a handmade lumpy and bumpy piece. You're going to start to see that texture benefit this style of painting because it's going to add a realistic vibe to it, right? It's going to make it look a little bit more real than, uh, than it would if this was like a totally smooth surface. It's just giving 
your painting a little bit more realism. So how's everybody doing? Did you have a great weekend? You hanging in? I know that some places have gone under lockdown again. I'm in Richmond, Virginia. I am not locked down. But even if I was, you would still catch me painting every single day. <laughs> painting is my therapy. Painting is my, my free therapy, right? Keeping yourself happy, keeping me happy anyways. And bringing you all along for the ride. Okay, so now here's my silo. So when you're painting a realistic piece of work, I want you to think about something. Where would your sunlight be, be if you're looking at this? Is your sun here? Is your sun here? I feel like my sun would be always to the top right. I tend to think it's up there in that corner. So that tells me I want the right side to be a little bit lighter and the left side to be a little bit darker. So I'm gonna dip into a little bit of driftwood and put some of that on my palette as well. Driftwood is kind of like a medium gray. And we're gonna highlight the one side of the silo because the silo would be curved, right? It would be like a curved piece and you wanna think about where the light is hitting it. So let's dip into some of the driftwood and just add a little bit of a shadow. So this is your highlight, right? Where the sun's hitting it is where the lightest part of the piece would be. I know this isn't um, everybody's style of painting, but y'all, this isn't that hard. Once you kind of get the basics down, this is something that you can do. It's something I think that you would like to do. I find it a little bit relaxing and calming. And I'm gonna tell you a little secret. Painted farmhouse, farmhouse style inspired pieces like this sell like hotcakes for me. It's bananas how fast these pieces sell. People love them. Anytime you can hand paint on something, it's a talent. All right, so let's dip into the gravel road and add a little shadow over here, right? So this is my highlight because remember my sun is up here. Over here is where my shadow would be. Let's add a little bit of darkness to the piece. Nothing has to be perfect, right? It's just kind of like playing with your paint. Okay, so now when I look at that, and let's bring you in even closer, I see, oh my gosh, so much stuff on the floor. So many things. I see a pretty little shadow, right? I see the shadow on my silo. So now I'm going to wipe off my little brush and I'm going to take pure gravel road and I'm gonna make kind of like a curved line, right? Because the silo is curved, I kinda wanna bring it. We're gonna like fake it a little bit and make it seem like this is a curved piece because the silo would have these kind of like a curved edge to it. So by doing something like this, you're adding a little bit more curve to what's happening on her. And if you have any questions, drop them in. I'll look and uh, hopefully answer them for you. So I'm gonna stick this brush in water. I'm gonna get a skinnier brush. I wanna take a little bit of caviar and start to add um, some of the, kind of like a silo has like rings on it, if you've ever seen a real barn and we're gonna pull it across like this. Not the whole way, just kind of like a little bit of a shadow, okay? And this is just gonna change the piece a little bit and give it that little bit more depth. So I'm gonna actually put my hand on here for balance, bring it up, and kind of do a little bit darker on this side. Hopefully it's not gonna to get too noisy. I hear a lot of yard people outside today. So there you go. For the silo, I would stop here. I think that this is good enough to look at and think, ah, this looks like a silo now on a barn. I do think I want to kind of diminish this a little bit. I kind of want to fade that line out a little bit. And then that would be a little bit better. Just a little bit softer. So there you go. So now you've got your sky, you've got your base, you've got your barn, but everything is looking a little bit mismatched, right? You want, you want to add some grass to this piece. So I'm going to open up a bunch of greens on the floor. I'm going to open up some palmetto. I'm going to open up some collard greens. And I already have my caviar. And let's do some holy guacamole. Let's fix this grass so that this looks like a real grassy field versus a um, such a straight, clean line, all right? 
All right, so I'm gonna take my chip brush because this chip brush is kind of like a little bit more of like a rough finish and I don't want a smooth finish, I want a rough finish. Another good brush for doing grass when it gets to be more detailed is like a smaller fan brush. But let's start with this. So let's start with the darks first. I'm gonna dip into my um, really pretty collard greens. And I'm just gonna to start to make some, some grass happen over here, okay? I'm gonna go over the grass that we started last week, which was a mix of some coffee beans, some collard greens, it was a little bit of everything. We're just kind of dirtying this up a little bit with my collard greens. Adding the grass, adding the texture, it's quite easy to do. You want it to come out of the barn a little bit because we want to kind of make it less of a, a seam line, if that makes sense. I'm going to dip into my caviar a tiny bit and I've got a paper towel down here. This is almost like a dry brush because I kind of want to fade it out. I don't want anything looking perfect, right? But when you start darker and then you move up to like a lighter tone, it helps. Let's add some holy guacamole. Again, blotting off your brush. See the difference in the texture? This is why I have to say that anybody can do this style of painting. This style of painting is not hard. It's just really playing with your paint, kind of figuring out what you like to do. So once I've kind of got that base down, I like to add a little bit darker in the corners. Let's add a little bit of caviar down here. I will be actually putting black wax on all of this piece as well because I don't want it to look too clean. All right, so there's your base of kind of like a hodgepodge of grass, right? You've got this really pretty little mix going on down here. You've got this dry brush, which I want to keep dry, so I'm not going to put it in water. And I'm going to switch over to my fan brush, which is just that really kind of spread out pinched brush. And I'm going to go into my holy guacamole. This brush is going to give you another look of grass. Okay, we're just adding a little bit of depth a little bit of dimension and we're just switching it up. You can dip into different colors, the colored greens. You know, it doesn't have to be the same all the time. I'm not rinsing this brush off. I'm just dropping it in and switching it up. You can add um, some really cute little pieces of wheat if you like by taking an even tinier brush. All you need to do is like do something like this. So say you wanted to add a piece of wheat, you needed like a stem and then you would do something like this. that are actually coming up a little bit closer and then things that are like a little bit further away, right? Just tiny little piece work that you can add onto your piece. I like to use my fan brush for this too because it kind of gives it that true wheat looking feel to it. And we're also going to be splattering this whole entire thing with paint. I don't know if you paint splattered before, but it's kind of a lot of fun. You're going to be taking your brush. I'm going to just take the brush that I used for grays over here and I'm going to put some paint on here and I'm going to dip it back in my water. And I'm going to kind of like mash it around. I don't want this paint to be really thick. I want it to be thin and I'm going to flick it. So when you flick your paint, it's going to add dots of paint. It kind of hurts your finger. <laughs> dots of paint onto your piece. But it doesn't look so fresh and so new. People don't like fresh and new. You can spray it. You can move this paint around. If you want to do it with um, greens, you can do it with greens. You can do it with blacks. But adding that, that really pretty little paint flick just adds a nicer little bit of dimension to your piece. Do you see what I'm, what I'm showing you here? It's kind of a fun way to dirty things up. And this by far isn't done this side, but for now, for for teaching sake, I'm going to stop because I want to turn this around and we're going to work on some birds. So now you kind of have the idea of how to do the silo and how to do the grass and dirt it up some. This is really easy to do. You can totally do this. You do it with a toothbrush. That's smart thinking. I should do that too. Um, let's add a little bit of shimmer to this barn before we turn it. So I like to add a little bit of shimmer. You can do this with gilding waxes. You can use this with mousse. This is the new gemstone mousse in garnet. So this is a beautiful red color. I don't get a chance to use the gemstone mousse or not yet. Um, when you open it up, it is a thicker consistency. Can you see how thick that is? 
gemstone mousse needs to be stirred. It needs to be stirred really, really well. The reason you're stirring this product super well is to bring it back to that mousse-like consistency. All right, because gemstone mousse is a water-based product that sits in this little jar and becomes separated before you use it. Here's the deal. If you do not stir your gemstone mousse to a whip, like getting it back up to this kind of consistency, see how whipped and delicious that is in there? If you do not stir it, you're not getting an even mix of all of the ingredients in the gemstone mousse. And you want to get an even mix of all the ingredients in a gemstone mousse, because if you are not applying it with all the ingredients, it's not going to dry well, it's not going to adhere well. You want to mix it up and then use this very sparingly in whatever manner you want. I'm gonna use this on my finger. You can use a brush, you can use a sponge, and this is just gonna add a little bit of shine and shimmer to my barn. The reason I like gemstone mousse is because, like I just told you, this is a water-based product, right? When you use a water-based product, you are using something that has no smell. I'm painting inside of my dining room right now. There's no smell and no VOCs, means that this product is better for you, this product is better for the environment, and it's giving you the ability to paint inside your house. I have kids, I have pets. I don't want to use anything that would be a toxic, um, a toxic item around them. So, gemstone mousse is a highly pigmented water-based mousse that is amazing for highlighting detail. It comes in four colors, there will be more eventually, but for now we have garnet, we have diamond, we have uh, golden gem, and we're missing copper. So I like to apply it like this. I'm just getting it kind of like a rough feel onto my barn. But using this product with no VOCs, it's just, this is change, a game changer, you guys. You need to know that you need to stir it super well. It needs to be whipped up into this mousse-like fashion so that you are getting the entire 100% of the product used in the correct way because it does settle being a water-based product. You're going to apply it with a brush or a finger and you're gonna know that it's gonna take about 24 hours to cure. I love this on hardware. I love this on the edges of my piece. If you can see the piece behind me, I use copper on this one. So pretty, so pretty. I want you to know that you can seal it um, after 24 hours, but it must be fully dry in order to be sealed. If this is not dry, it will wipe back and it will smear. So if it's not dry all the way, you can try you know, drying it extra quick with a hair dryer but you want it to be dry and you can use a spray wax if you prefer before you do a clear coat because this is a water-based product, it could reactivate upon sealing. So you wanna make sure it's 100% dry and 100% ready for a sealer. I personally usually use it last, but at this point, I'm gonna use it on this cute little cabinet and then tomorrow when I'm done, I'm gonna be sealing this cabinet with wax and that's how this will be sealed. I think you should give it a try. It's a lot of fun, but the fact of the matter is that it's so safe Look at my horrible manicure. Terrible, right? <laughs> it's so safe to use inside with my pets. You guys see my dogs all the time. You guys see my kids all the time. Um, there's no smell. So that is a winner, winner chicken dinner for me because the fact that it doesn't stink like a, an oil-based product, you know, that the chemicals do need to be used in a well-ventilated area. This is good to go and you're totally safe to use it indoor, around your kids, around your dogs. So that's my FYI moose of the day. Any questions, drop them in. I'll answer them for you later. But I use garnet just to accent. So when I turn my barn in the light, you're going to get a little bit of shine and it's going to start to look even more detailed. It gives it just that really, really great dimension. All right. So let's do a little bit of grass and then I'm going to show you how to do the crow. Okay. Um, the reason I'm doing the grass first is because the crow will be standing on a post in front of the grass. Make sense? Good. Let's dip into some collard greens and start adding some more of that dry brush grass to the piece. You don't want that clean little line. You want to start painting over top of all of these little edges and giving your barn some dimension. I'm going to dip into holy guacamole and bring it down here. And even today when we're done this, I'm probably not going to be done. I probably will still keep picking away at it and adding grass and adding texture and adding all sorts of fun things because I'm fussy like that and I like to paint like that. I like to just keep adding stuff and moving it around. Okay, let's add 
What do I have on the floor? Where is my, let's go over here and dip into my gravel road and bring some of this brown up here. I don't want the edges to look so clean. I want it to be more messy. And the other thing you can also do is start to spray this. Use your fingers. Start to spray this and move this around. Drips are delicious on hand painting. They are gonna give your piece that extra little shadow and we're gonna build all these little layers. All right? Okay, so now you can see this grass has kind of come up in front of the barn. We've lost that clean edge. Now the barn is, is looking a little bit more natural. And I'll probably add like a tree branch over here. We're gonna make this bird sit on a post. Before I do my bird on a post, I would draw him on. So for reference, you're gonna look at your paper and you're gonna say, what crow do I wanna draw? Do you like the crow looking this way, this way, this way? I like this guy. So I've kind of come in already before I turn the camera on and added a tiny bit of detail so that I could come in and see where he was at, knowing that I'm gonna paint him black. We're gonna do a crow silhouette, okay? So my crow is gonna be painted in caviar. I'm gonna start with a thicker brush so that I can get his body filled in and then come in with a thinner brush to do the edges. So, black caviar, and don't be scared, he's gonna look like he's floating in the middle of nothing right now, <laughs> but he will be standing on a post, I promise. Black caviar to begin with on a thicker brush, just to kind of get that start going on, okay? I'm gonna get a smaller brush that has a cleaner edge to it. Let's do this one and work on his edges. Again, no rules in painting. If you don't like this when you're doing it, if it doesn't turn out the way that you want it to turn out, you are more than welcome to come back and erase him. <laughs> Paint over top of him, make him disappear. You don't have to, you don't have to keep it all the same all the time. If you don't like it when you're done painting it, there's no rules, paint over top of them. It's just the bird, he won't care. So I'm just coming in and doing these cleaner edges. So when I see crow silhouette, they're always like looking a little spooky, so which is why I don't mind leaving them completely black. I'm gonna come in and do his beak with a tinier brush. Smaller, smaller brush. How are we doing, are we hanging in? Are you enjoying this so far? Do you think you're gonna paint any of these? I think you should. I think it's a lot of fun. I'm gonna bring his beak down. You'll see me kind of rest my hand, my dirty hands, on the, um, the piece because I like to balance when I'm doing this part. Something people always think that it's getting very Edgar Allan Poe-ish, which is kind of true. I do live in Richmond, Virginia. It is feeling a little Edgar Allan Poe-ish. Go back to this brush. So his wings will come down kind of like this, kind of like this. His tail will come down like this. And that is pretty much a crow. I don't like how I did his neck. Let's make his neck a little less defined and let's add some legs. You can totally do this. <laughs> you can hand paint anything on your pieces of furniture. And all of a sudden you've got a one of a kind wonder that people are willing to uh, pay the big bucks for. Okay, so I'm gonna start his feet, his legs, but I'm not going to do his feet because he's gonna be standing on a post, right? So let's work on the post that he's gonna be standing on. So I'm going to go back to the thicker brush and I'm going to use chocolate, I believe. It's brown and I want him to be standing on a post. We're gonna add some barbed wire and we're gonna have some fun with this. So a post will probably be standing here. Put it on an angle because you don't want it to be perfect, right? Nothing in painting is straight up and down. Let's pretend that his post comes up like this. Okay, can you see that? How are we doing? Hanging in? I see some people watching. So we're gonna come in with the browns and the darker browns and some black and create him a post to stand on top of. So I'm gonna use a little bit of gravel road, remembering that my sunlight is this way, right? So the darker side 
is going to have to be at the bottom, kind of under it. You also don't want it to be 100% perfect. You want it to be a little bit rustic. The fence post would be like this. Fence post dries and I add multiple, multiple layers, I would come in and decorate his little feet. I'm going to throw a little bit of collard greens on there just because I feel like it needs a little bit more dimension. And again with the black. little fan brushes for this and then when you have extra amounts of paint on your brush keep going keep adding little bits of, of texture you know to your piece you want to keep adding all of these colors because the more you add the more realistic it's going to look sleep yet <laughs> very bob rossish of me <laughs> Again, dipping between the blacks and the browns and the greens. And some of it, you're gonna want it to get dry a little bit before you work on like the next individual part. So let's say that he's gonna stay here and we're gonna have this branch that he's standing on. I need that branch to get a little bit more dry before I can continue to paint grass and things around him. So let's turn it to this side. Let's see, you like the crow's mother? The chickens were too pretty. I didn't want it to be that pretty, honestly. I, I really thought doing a colorful chicken like I did interior, <laughs> that fun little chicken down there, I thought that I would love him. I don't know, maybe I'm just, I belong more on the dark side over here. I just liked the ability to really keep it looking a little, I don't know, more dirty, more real. Plus chicken was too colorful. I feel like a piece like this is kind of moody. It calls for black. So there we have one crow. Remember, his feet will go on here, he'll be staying in here. Turn it a little bit. Before I go, where did I put my pencil? I wish you could see the floor because there's 11 billion things. Let's just get, oh, there it is. Okay, so let's get a new pencil. I found one. So let's turn it around even more. So again, you're going to want to think about what kind of crow you're going to put there. If you look at your reference pages, I guess I can get rid of the chicken page now. Think about what kind of crow you want. You want like a standing crow? Do you want a crow that would be, you know, kind of wing spread. I already did him on that side, so we're gonna do that on over here. I think he should kind of come up a little bit more. But before we get started, remember we have to do our greens. We have to do our grasses, and we have to add a little bit more of something to this piece to get rid of that line. You don't want that clean, clean line of grass. You wanna turn it around and make it look a little bit more rough. So we're gonna go in between palmetto we're gonna go in between collard greens. I'm gonna dip into my browns. Let's move it around a little bit and make some magic happen, shall we? And this whole thing, at the end of the day, we're gonna sand all the edges and make it look super rustic. And we're going to add black wax and darken the edges. This is the fun part. I think that everybody should probably sit on the floor and play with paint at least a couple times. See if you like it or not. You might be super good at it. <laughs> you might be your new hidden talent. Remember, we're gonna be flicking paint on here. Somebody said they use a toothbrush to paint flick. I think that's a great idea. It's probably a lot less painful than beating my fingers onto the paintbrush. Okay, so now we've kind of dulled that line a little bit, right? The line was really, really harsh. We've really softened it a little bit. Let's draw a crow. So we said we did this one on this side. Let's do this guy over here. So if you look at a crow, again, simple shapes, right? You've got like an oval. So we're gonna start with kind of like an oval shape on the body and his head will come up here. So we're gonna do a head like this. Their head kind of like melts into their body. And then they have these really long tails, right? These 
black tails. His body comes down like this, and then his beak will come over like this. Basic shapes again, kind of a square head. Make sure you build up a crow's head. They have that really square head. It helps to look at pictures too. Go to Pinterest, check out Pinterest. Um, look at silhouettes. Look how nature really is, and you will get it together in no time. So we're just gonna paint in some of the body here so that we don't have to do as much tiny hand painting. We're using caviar for the crow because the crow is hello. Crows are always black. remember that you've done on here, it's all erasable after your paint dries if you don't paint over top of it. You can easily get rid of that, but you do have to wait for your paint to dry. So this crow should be standing on a post probably as well. And they have these little, kind of like a thick leg that comes down. What do you think? Look like a crow? <laughs> Let's get a tiny brush and put his beak on there, shall we? We need a smaller brush for the beak. This, your friends are going to be like, wow, you painted that? And you'll be like, yes, I did. Done is paint like a, an outline <laughs> when it comes down to it. It's not hard, it's just an outline, it's just shapes. It's just shadows, right? There's my crow on the side of my, on the side of my piece. So he should be standing on a, a stick as well because I think I'm gonna put barbed wire in between the two posts that I'm painting on here. Again, mixing your browns to make a log that you're going to detail and add shadows to. You don't need it to be perfect. I actually prefer it if it's not perfect. You wanna add texture, you wanna add detail. And remember the crow's feet are gonna be very last because you're gonna want this to get very dry before you come in here and do the small little detailed work. Remember your sunlight is up to the right, we said, so the darkness has to come on one side. You have to make sure that it's got nice dark details on the bottom coming up into the light, more of a lighter side. So what do you think? Do you think you guys could paint something like this? You can totally do this, Jane. I know you can do it. Send me a message. I'll walk you through the steps. But listen, if I can sit on the floor and run my mouth the whole time that I'm painting this, you can totally, totally do this. This is not hard. This is playing with texture, playing with color, finding out how you you know, want to paint this. I like to add these little kind of like lighter pieces of grass at the top. This is not hard. This is literally playing, having fun, making it happen. And honestly, build these layers. So the more times you go over things with different colors and different branches and different textures, you're able to really build up a really pretty farm scene with birds and crows. Let's add a couple little birds in the sky, shall we? Because there probably is more than one crow flying around. So I'm gonna dip into the caviar. Let's add some little flying birds. That's very easy, all it is is a V. Literally a V, okay? Some of them are bigger, some of them are smaller. All you do is just adding in some tiny little birds. Can you see them? I know it's small but they add a nice little piece of your painting. I had tiny little bodies. Let's tip you in so you can see a little bit closer. See those birds? So there's three there. I feel like there should be definitely more, definitely an odd number. So we're gonna add a couple more. We can even come in here with black and add a bit more texture to the side of the roof. You see how that beautiful gemstone mousse created that gorgeous highlight? So nice. Of 
version of Melissa today. I'm usually not this quiet. <laughs> I usually have a lot more to say. But when I'm painting something like this, I, I have a hard time talking um, and painting detail just because I do. I think it's just harder to focus. Okay, so now you can see how your barn and your silos, let's go over it one more time. You come in with your different grays. You've added this really pretty silo attached to your barn. You can just keep going with the grass. Keep adding, keep adding that texture, all right? You come in with your gemstone mousse. We talked about applying that little bit of shine, that little bit of texture onto your, your barns. We painted a beautiful bird, and again on this side. I'm gonna show you another way to make this even more weathered and delicious and good. On the floor somewhere, there it is, I have a piece of sandpaper. So remember we painted this beautiful sky in Mason Dixon Gray. We came down here with a bit of sea glass. All of this wood is, is marked, right? It's, a, it's marked wood. It's not a clean, even surface. Let's dirty it up and distress it a little bit. Once you start to distress that, which is why I use clear boss before I started, because if you use white, it's gonna peek through. Once you start to distress that, it just adds really pretty, really pretty texture to your piece. You can come in where your barn is. Here's another little trick to make your barn look even more like wood. Bend your sandpaper in half. Let's pull some, some barn wood through. Get that edge. Oh, my light's falling apart. It might fall down on me if my camera falls. <laughs> I ordered a new ring light. It's not here yet. It comes, I think, tomorrow. So adding that on there, taking off some of these clean, clean, clean lines. Making all these edges super worn out. Sand that knob. Making it look genuinely like an old cabinet. What do you think? Isn't it cute? Do you like this? Is this something that you think you're going to try and do? Because I think that this is something that everybody can do. Um, I'm going to be going in here and sealing this with clear wax, but I can show you a little bit of what black wax in the corners will do. So this is Best Stain Wax in Black, and this is my French tip. I keep this brush just for my waxes, okay? I've dipped it in here. You can take a little bit off if you want on your paper towels, and you can kind of darken your corners. Let's dirt it up a little bit more. So I keep a towel on the floor for rubbing some of the black back a little bit, because I just want to add a little bit of darkness don't want perfect. I want this cupboard to be decrepit and kind of old. If you were to clear wax first, you're able to, oh, sorry, if you were to clear wax first, you're able to come up here and um, wipe this back even easier. But e either way, you can dark wax and clear wax on top. I'm going to be adding a bunch of black wax to all of the edges on this place just to give it that little bit more depth. What do we think? Do you like it? Is my version of farmhouse working for you? <laughs> this is the only way you're gonna get me to paint farmhouse, is if I'm painting moody crows on a dark gray sky, making stuff look old and dirty, giving it some visual interest. I think it's a lot of fun. And I think that you guys could try it too. I don't think that this is a hard look to achieve. I think it's just a matter of practicing and playing with your paint. So there you go, that's the plan, to sit on the floor and continue to add grass, to continue to add you know, leaves and texture and colors and dirt to the base. You know, I wanna build up some of this texture. I'm gonna to have to work on this log to make it look even more real, which is gonna involve some paint flicking. I'm definitely gonna be adding dirt to the whole entire base because it needs to be way more dirty. And once I can get this grass a little bit more dry, I'm gonna be coming in and adding even more to the front. Do I have any questions at all? Let's see, you like the crows, second crow and an old dead tree. You know, I find trees actually a little bit more difficult to paint, only because they're so organic and so free. Sometimes it's hard to get those branches. Let's put a little one coming out here and see if we can, what we can do. Um, the brush that I like to use to make a tree is my fan brush. Which again, I have 11 billion things on the floor. There it is. 
I wish y'all could see how much stuff is on the floor when I'm doing this. It's always crazy over here. <laughs> I get covered. My floor gets covered. Let's paint a little bit of a tree over here. So this fan brush is nice because it has this kind of like, I don't know, fanned out edge. Let's do it. Let's start it in gravel road, shall we? I'm gonna put a little bit of paint in my brush. Less is more when it comes to hand painting. And I like to support my arm, okay? I'm gonna bring up a little tree branch. Let's bring up a little tree branch. Ooh, it needs to be even more black. So we can bring up a tree. Let's bring in a little tiny, tiny brush. Because the branches are so, you know, you have to be just so, I don't know, free when you paint a tree. I'm, I'm, I'm not the best, but I will do it. I will try anything. You can put the tree in front of this barn. You can put it behind the barn entirely up to you. I think the trick is to really not stay very straight with tree branches. I think they need to be kind of broken. And I'm not putting leaves on this tree either. <laughs> it'll be a, it'll be a cranky tree like the rest of the painting. But again, just having fun with it. Just playing with it. Feeling it out. Deciding what you like to put in your work over here. I feel like I need more lights up here. Let's put some more holy guacamole. So yeah, paint the layers, have fun with it. Have a good time, because at the end of the day, I tell you guys this all the time, it's just paint, there's no rules. You don't have to copy this exactly. I really would love for you to try it and make it your own. But adding that little bit of dark shadow, adding those paint flicks of you know product so that it becomes just a little bit more dirty, a little bit more textured. Nothing too clean always looks it doesn't look as real. You know, to me, the more dirty this is, the more we can dirt up these edges with wax, with paint flips, with putting that texture in the corners, the more real it's gonna look, the more moody it's gonna look, the darker it's gonna start to take a shape with. You can get in here with your wax if you wanted to. Put some in your, put some in your silo. There's no rules. You wanna darken up your silo? Add some wax. Make it darker. If you want to come in with your mousse or your gilding wax, you could totally do that as well. Um, it's just taking it to the level that you want to take it to to make it look the way that you're happy with it. So personally, I like to paint all the things. I like to color all the things. <laughs> I like to dirt it all up. I can use some um, wax. I have some um, gilding wax here on the floor that I probably can't open because I don't have a screwdriver. So the gilding wax can come in and touch all the edges. I almost just stabbed myself with a screwdriver on camera. That wouldn't have been good. So this is the bronze. Remember before we talked about the mousse being a water-based product, having no smell, being entirely no VOCs, able to use inside? This is the gilding wax, okay? This bronze has a tiny shimmer, not a ton, just a little bit. I do like the shimmer that it gives, but here's the deal. It's a tiny bit stinky. It's an oil-based product. You're not gonna get that really clean feeling that you get when you use the mousse. You know, the mousse is the same, highly pigmented, but it doesn't smell. It's water-based. You're able to do it inside your house. I'm doing this in my house, but guess what? It's a little stinky. Since this is an oil-based product, you're able to just put it on last if you want. It hardens right up. It seals right up. And uh, they kind of work in conjunction, you know, mousse and gilding wax are two different things but they both do similar styles. They both are gonna add a little bit of glam, a little bit of shine to your piece. They're both gonna be really great for highlighting detail. It's just that you need to be aware that the mousse has a tiny smell, it is an oil-based product, or sorry, the gilding wax is, a, is an oil-based product, it has a tiny smell. The mousse does not have any smell, has zero VOCs, and it's a water-based product. This you do not need to seal. The mousse, you might want to seal because it can reactivate with water, but you can seal it with your spray wax, you can seal it with your spray sealer, however you wanna do it, you just need to know that you're going to have to wait until it is completely dry before you do seal it so that it doesn't move. All right, y'all, this I think is as far as I can take it for me right now. I don't know if I can go any further. I need some stuff to kinda of dry up a little bit and then I'm gonna come in here and play with some more darkness. I'm gonna add some more little pieces of grass, 
I'm gonna probably add some little pieces of wheat, <laughs> some corn stalks, something like that. And I'm gonna play with my paint. Like I hope that you would too. So I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. Now you get to see the entire piece. Maybe I can push you back a little bit further so you can see the whole, the whole thing. It's got that natural wood top that we did with hemp oil. The clouds were done in the, in the beautiful Mason Dixon gray and a little bit of sea glass. I used uh, cotton for the clouds. I showed you last week how to make these really pretty clouds. I showed you how to draw a barn. I showed you how to do the silo today, how to paint on some cute little moody crows. And it's a work in progress. I think that you can try this and I would love to see it if you do. Please send me a picture. My name is Melissa. I am the owner and artist of the Top Drawer VA. And if you do decide to paint this, I would love to see, because I think, uh, think you all can do it and I wanna check it out. All right, I will see you next Wednesday at 3 p.m. Let's see, where can you find part one? Right here on the Dixie Bell paint page. It was actually last Wednesday um, at three and it is saved there. If you go to videos, you're gonna be able to pull up all the videos and you will see it. I did hashtag this, clouds, sky, barn. You can also find it on my own Facebook page, which I also linked above my head. If you need a complete list of these colors, please feel free to send me a message. I'm happy to help you. I can send you a list of all the colors I used. Um, but to be honest with you, you can do this with any colors as long as you are making your own little landscape happen. I'm not going to lie though, you kind of need the Mason Dixon Gray. It is the jam for making really pretty clouds. It adds a lot of drama to a piece, that Mason Dixon Gray. As well as this black wax, you kind of need that too. You can substitute a couple things, but you can't substitute the black wax for dirtying it up and you can't really substitute that moody sky without using the Mason Dixon Gray. So I hope you all had fun today and uh, stay tuned because I'm gonna sit down here while I'm messy and just get her done. <laughs> I will see you next week on Wednesday at 3 p.m. Take care everybody, have a great day, bye.